hello, hello. Welcome to today's Daily Boost. Yours truly, Dr. Charles and David here. And I am looking forward to a glorious time. Welcome aboard. I see we have a lot of you already joined us today. Praise God. I have um, Nalita. Hello. Gloria, God bless you. Don Pierre, God bless you. Orge, God bless you. Donna, Ingrid, God bless all of you. Birgits, hallelujah from Copenhagen. And Chris from Dexter, Iowa in the house. And Princess Lucy, Caroline Jones, God bless you, city. Love all of you that have joined me. I want you to share this today because we have an amazing amazing video to show you today I call it the chaos of miracles chaos of miracles I see prophet Frank Udo is in the house welcome on board it's gonna be wild power school I can't wait to see and welcome all of you to the power school of miracles there is such an excitement building up it is exciting it's exciting it's exciting I want to welcome all of you and today I want to show you a video I can assure you you want to be in the front row seat hallelujah that's all I can say you will be in the front row seat experiencing one of our miracle campaign our festival of miracles in India in the place called Turina Valley tremendous miracles as I preached and uh, before I came to ministering to the people, before I even started praying for them, there was what I call a chaos of miracles. A chaos of miracles. It just exploded in the tens of thousands of people. I believe that night we had about 75,000 people according to the count of the people that were there. It was glorious. It was glorious. It was glorious the people over there was an overflow beyond the walls on the other side it was glorious to see the miracles that happened hallelujah so we'll be showing you that but in the in the first time first place i want you to register for the power school of miracles psom.org the reason why you register is to receive an impartation I believe in impartation I believe that God is doing something fresh and something new and I know that you are a part of that so I am excited to see everybody on board today praise God hallelujah so we are looking forward to all the glorious things that God is going to do uh, today hallelujah there is something God is releasing on the earth and you want to be part of that and um, I have Marco God bless you. I love you too. I love all of you. So we are going to go straight. This video, it's amazing. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. And then I'm going to be teaching you something that is going to blow your mind. So you get yourself ready. You know what I say to people? I said this. The Bible says in Acts, it says, none of those things moved me. When you are, when you have nothing to lose, you become absolutely dangerous to the devil. But if you feel you have something to lose, then you will be playing scared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what am I saying to you today? I am saying this is going to be, thank you. We have our wonderful esteem princess Rekha, our international director. I have Michelle all the way from Hawaii. God bless you. It's wonderful to see you on board today. So what am I saying? I'm going to be showing you. And uh, of course, uh, Princess Rekha remembered, you remember this night because we were in India together and uh, you were there. I mean, being the, the international director, uh, the crusade director also. I want you to remember this night. That was the first night of the meeting. It was tremendous what God did. So the, the reason why we always are sharing with people, the reason why we're always sharing with people is because we want people to know what God can do. What God can do. If he did it for others, 
he will do it for you. So most times people don't understand what we do because we don't show a lot of things. But you are about, I'm making sure everybody that is on board now, you don't want to ch change the page you're on right now because you are about to watch an explosion of miracles. I'm talking about a chaos of miracles, absolute chaos, miracles happening in all, all from all directions. How are you going to handle those things? Hallelujah. So you don't want to miss this today. You want to stay glued in. I'm going to show the video in a short time because I, I don't want you to come back and try to find out what this excitement is about. Yesterday was Monday Marvel and we started off as if we were on Friday fire. So we are starting Monday like a Friday, Tuesday. The fire is raging. The Holy Ghost fire is raging. Hallelujah. So when we get there, we want to be able to, uh, we want to be able to um, uh, show you this video. And I know that this video is going to bless you. And uh, if you're ready, make sure you can share. First of all, share this with anyone that is on your list. You want to share, go and just share this video because it is going to make an impact immediately. Share this video with your, in your timeline. Share it with your groups. Share it with as many people as possible. Get ready for a chaos of miracles. I said this video, we've never shown it anywhere. Um, one of the things when we were going to in, in Inspiration Network and uh, TBN, they were shocked to see some of the miracles that happened. But we want you to experience this. I call it, you are there, live and direct, front row seat in the chaos of miracles in India. So you don't want to miss it. You want to share it because we are about to show that video right now. Share with as many people as possible because I know that most of those people, most of those people are going to be blessed by what they say. So you want to share this with as many people as possible. Adi, God bless you. I'm glad you joined me. And Egon, thank you. It is going to be glorious. So get ready. We're going to turn this thing loose now. And you are going to be saying exactly what I'm talking about. This is a chaos of miracles. One of the things I'm, I'm not going to do is I'm not going to comment all through this video because I want you to capture exactly the atmosphere when we have our festival of miracles around the world. Let's roll that clip. You can't take your eyes off it. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. What am I doing? Do what I do. Ah. Close it again. No, no, no. Close the right one. Ah, can you see this? Ah. One, he says one. Put your hand up. Let's see. Put your hand. Let's see. Ah. What's this? Now look again. Can you see this? What am I doing? Do what I do. Do what I do. Do what I do. Yes. Yes. Do what I do. Do what I do. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is wonderful. Amen. Right. Right. Ministry team, go ahead and take them off. That's wonderful. What happened? But now, now she can walk. Listen, listen, listen. Miracles are taking place. She could not stand or walk. In the play all and yell me the one that now she's walking and standing. Oh, in the play yell me that all the summer to your hands like this. In the play part, she could not stand. In the play all and yell me the one that now not a comedy. Look at that. 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 She could not even stand. I don't know. 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 Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Miracles are taking place everywhere. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Are you happy? Very happy. Let's clap our hands and give Jesus praise. This is wonderful. How old are you? She's 11 years old. Is that the mother? 
She is the grand the grandma. She is the grandma of this world. This is amazing. You remember to the mark. Yeah, I hear grandma. Eleven years. Eleven years. This is one. She could not walk. When she was six years old, she was a little bit walking. She's the first time she saw her standing. This is the first time the grandmother has seen her standing by herself. Let's clap our hands and pray to the Lord. Let's clap our hands and pray to the Lord. Hallelujah! This is wonderful! And this is only the first night. They are wonderful to find out there. You can take your granddaughter and walk around and have some fun. This is amazing. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going, I haven't even prayed yet. Listen, listen. Are you ready for your miracle right now? Are you ready for your miracle right now? This is wonderful. I want you to lay your hand on your sick body. Just line up the testimonies. Just line them up. Line them up. Line them up. I want you to listen to this. Another miracle. She could not stand. She could not stand, but she's walking. This is wonderful. This is what no, 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 no. Please. Just for now, for now, for now. Can I just pray for the people right now? Hallelujah.
Wow, 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 wow. Let's get back to this. It was chaos of miracles. It was chaos. This little boy was blind in one eye and he was healed and it was a chaos of miracles. My goodness. I remember that night like it happened yesterday. Everywhere we went, it was a chaos of miracles. We saw that night over, over 10,000 people raise their hands up that they were healed that night. It was glorious. It was glorious to see the people behind the walls, people behind. There were ambulances that were brought into the meeting and they were behind the stage. And the people in the ambulance were completely healed. The gospel is still the power of God for anyone that will believe. It's for you. It's for anyone that will believe the good news. And the, the, the reason I get so excited is because this same gospel has been committed to our trust. The Bible declares that the gospel has been committed to our trust. God has entrusted you and I with the greatest opportunity of carrying his message to the world. And yesterday I started out by talking about some of the important things we needed to know. And I mentioned to you that uh, when I started today, today's Transformation Tuesday, and uh, when I started, I said to you that this gospel must be preached. I said when you become when you become, when you have nothing to lose, you become dangerous. Too many people have too much, quote unquote, to lose. That's why they are being overly careful about living, instead of living life to the fullest. In other words, this is what Paul said. In, uh, he says this in uh, Acts chapter 20 verse 24. He said, none of the things moved me. This is what he said. He said, none of those things moved me. Neither, neither count I my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I'm telling you, the day you have nothing to lose is the day you make a discovery of the force of God on the inside of you. We live in a society where today, every little thing, people are queers and they bow to what they see around them. We have made a vow to preach the gospel to the fullest. Every one of you that is watching me today, I want to invite you again to the Power School of Miracles. And uh, Princess Ray here is reminding me of the, ba of the baby with a big head, the word head, and the head visibly began to shrink before the people. Those are the kind of miracles we have seen all over the world. I see James, welcome on board. Hallelujah. You see, one of the best investments you can, you can make for yourself, making an investment in yourself, is to come to the Power School of Miracles. When you come to the School of Miracles, there is an impartation that you receive that you can carry with you wherever you go. Amen. So I'm talking today, I want to get back to some of the things I said yesterday. I gave you four facts about the gospel proclaimed. I said number one, keep it simple. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3, it says, I. Paul was very careful. He says, I am very, very, he said, I'm jealous with you, uh, for you with a godly jealousy. Why would Paul make a statement like that? Because he was very, very careful about who, who we listen to. I said, Christine is on. Bless you, sweetie. I love you. Hear what Paul said. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Verse 3, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds shall be corrupted 
your mind shall be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. Today, I, I hear people always talking about, well, they told me I have to do this, I have to do that. And the way the gospel is carried out to the world has been made too complicated that until ordinary people feel that they can never attain to what they are already in. The Bible makes a statement. It said that the ordinary people hurt Jesus readily. That meant they could understand Jesus very quickly, but the religious people were too complicated. That's one thing I can tell about religion. Religion loves to be very mysterious and complicated and hides things so that you don't understand. And so that way they can decide what you have to think like. Remember what I say, it's okay to think new thoughts. It's okay to think afresh. It's okay to have a fresh revelation of Jesus alive today. And here is Paul saying, he said, don't let people corrupt your mind away from the simplicity that is in Christ. In Christ is found the simplicity of God. In all the words, when you come to the gospel, there is something that happens on the inside of you. Now. I want you to understand the reason I'm teaching this is when I'm about what I'm about to share with you is understanding the vastness of the wealth in you and how you can reproduce what you have discovered on the inside of you. That's the whole idea. I want you to be in a place where any dream you have dreamt, anything you see in the spirit, you can reproduce it here on earth. I realize this. Hallelujah. A lot of people are always looking for something deep and mysterious. Like somebody once said to me, he said, Oh, I just want I just want to go and pray. I want to spend time with God. I've heard that many times. I want to spend time with God. And so they go and pray. I like that. That's great. I, I like doing that. Some nights I'm all up I'm up all night. That's wonderful. But the best time I can interact with God is when I also interact with people. God has come to me and he wants to dwell in me and go out and reach out to the people and lift the people. I become his voice. You become his hands extended. You become his heart to love the people. God wants to take on a human flesh and can be touched and can be loved and can be loved. People want to make contact with flesh and that's where you come in and that's where something amazing begins to happen on the inside of you and I said four things number one keep it simple number two for if he come he that comes preaches another Jesus you go to a lot of places that tell you that Jesus does not do miracles anymore that is another Jesus they tell you that what he did in Bible days he doesn't do that today because we have doctors today of course my friends they had doctors in Bible days just the same I've heard all kinds of things that people say people have tried so much to make the lesser life the normal life when there is a higher life to live and so what happens is we get conditioned we get conditioned to becoming people that all we do is go and live the ordinary life but my friends I'm here to tell you there is extraordinary there's another dimension available to anyone that will dare to believe it hallelujah you understand what I'm talking about today hallelujah the moment you dare to believe and uh, uh, <laughs> Ernest he just walked in uh, not long ago he was telling me he said dad I love I was listening to one of your old messages and you said that uh, I made the statement I said it's amazing how people will tell you to be like Jesus and when you act like Jesus you start doing miracles you start talking like Jesus I and my father are one and you start you know acting like Jesus the same people that want you to be like Jesus are the first one that will say you are arrogant and the want you crucified kind of interesting isn't it thank God we don't listen to those things we just do what we have seen we reproduce the Jesus that has taken his abode in us that's what we do so whatever they want to do I just, <laughs> I just I just I'm just having a great time today coming to you with good news with love and coming to you to let you know 
there's something on the inside of you that wants to be expressed to the world around you. So they come preaching a different Jesus whom we have not preached. Or the Bible says that you, they, you receive another spirit. What kind of spirit have you received? Oh, don't worry, I'm going to come to my topic. I'm still warming up. Part of what I do is I want to give you all the missing pieces so that when I tell you things, you know you have a foundation to stand on. That way you, 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 you keep your mind simple to hearing truth. When you know the truth, freedom has come. Hallelujah. So my thing is to bring you to the place where the Word of God is alive on the inside of you in every fiber of your being where sickness is no longer something you're contending with your mind is not tuned to the frequency of sickness your mind is tuned to the frequency of only life not only i'm not even talking about being healed i'm talking about life of not being sick in the first place and <laughs> that's where my mind share is hallelujah i believe that when we understand those things it changes everything we do it actually changes everything you do when your thinking changes it changes the outcome of your life now i'm talking about having another spirit what kind of spirit do we have the bible says god has not given you the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind hallelujah the holy ghost has shed the love in your heart so we don't go around trying to condemn people John chapter 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son we know that scripture that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life that sounds really wonderful but we skip out on verse 17 which is the the spirit of verse 16 for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that through him the world can be saved and my friends as the father sent Jesus so has he sent us too. It's not our place to condemn the world. It's not our place to tell the world they are wrong. It is only our place to give them the good news and the Holy Ghost will do the rest. Hallelujah. You see, when, you, when people don't trust the Holy Ghost, that's when they want to do the work of the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost do his part and you do your part and you walk together and he leads you and he shows you and I'm telling you, you're going to be living a life full of fun. Hallelujah. So I am setting this up because you are about, we're going to make a quick segue. You, you understand what I'm saying? The spirit, whatever you're doing, that should be your spirit. It should not be a spirit of competition. It's not whether this one has 100,000 members and you have to. No, just show excellence with whatever God has given you. And God is the one that provides increase. God is the one that rewards you based on your uh, accountability and your stewardship so you don't have to worry you never come into the place where see there's always somebody going to be doing something different from you so you need not worry i already talked about running your own race not somebody else's race so you understand the the basis of what we talk about never you compare yourself with other people you don't know what they're going through you might be in a better place than most people you're comparing yourself with so just relax like we see here you just chillax right <laughs> I know heavenly brazer if she was here she would tell you that and the rest of you know what I'm talking about now let me get down to this I'm talking about understanding the spirit of the gospel and then the fourth thing it tells you that it says um, and another gospel there is another gospel. You see, I've heard some people say uh, this, they, they preach something and say it is the gospel. Now, for it to be gospel, it must be good news. It must be good. It must, it must tell the people what is good and what is new about Jesus now that is good news good news is not you're going to be healed next year that is not good news good news is not you're going to be rich next year no good news is it's only good if it's good for now that's how you know it's good news it must show redemptive value of all that jesus has made available that is the good news when people don't understand that they get into all kinds of things and one of the funny thing i see sometimes people want to show that they have power and they want to show the display of power let me tell you 
I think tomorrow I'm, I'm going to make it just to show you a display of power around the globe. People fall all over the place in our meetings. You know, we don't show those things a lot, not because we don't experience that. We experience that all the time. But the point is, if you see that and there's no transformation, what good is it? I don't want you to look at me and say, wow, he look at how God is using him. I want you to look and say, God is at work on earth. Hallelujah. You want to know what God is doing in the now. Hallelujah. It must be good news. So if somebody else come preaching a message that is not good for now, that you cannot receive, that is not good news. Hallelujah. Some people come and talk about what they call good history. What is the difference? History is what happened. News is what is happening. So you've got the difference now. News is what's good news, is what's good and is happening right now. Jesus has come in 2019 and he still continues to do wonders amongst people and he does wonders through you. Now, let's get back to the whole point of this. The whole point of this is how do we translate this wonderful concepts, these ideas of heaven, and how do we translate it and make it tangible and make it visible and make it viable that ordinary people can understand this? How can we do that? How can we translate spiritual truth into physical substance? The word must become flesh. Hallelujah. The word of God must become flesh. How do we translate ideas? <laughs> ideas. The video, I mean, I mean, the, uh, every time I think about the video, uh, maybe Oren, you can just play a bit of that video, uh, the, the video we just showed today. And I'm looking at the, the little girl, the, all these little girls that could not walk, walking for the first time. Oh my goodness, there were so many amazing testimonies that day. And we just couldn't take, you no, know, even one-tenth of the testimonies because it was full of glory, a chaos of miracles. It happened all over the place. My God, my God. That's what I'm talking about, folks. When you are operating in this dimension of glory, something must shift on the earth. Hallelujah. What am I saying? Let us translate the supernatural ideas into tangible things. It's about production. The proof of what you know is what you produce. I remember uh, Dr. T. Osman said that to us many years ago. He said, son, don't, don't work on doing, work on being. When you work on being, the doing is easy. When you understand what you're called to, to be, it becomes easy to do. The doing is the proof you have become. That's my part. The the doing is the proof that you become what you have imbibed, what you have studied. And that's what I'm talking about today. Hallelujah. Something on the inside of you now begins to move. Something on the inside of you begins to impact others. Something on the inside of you comes out like a mighty rushing stream. Hallelujah. It comes with a tidal wave of glory to produce. When I was getting ready this morning, the Holy Ghost said to me, I want you to teach them, maybe this week or next week, He said, I want you to teach them this. That let them awake to take. Awaken to take. That's the idea. So I began to look at some things. I thought I might introduce this a bit today because we are still talking about the vastness of your wealth. The vastness. I just want to flow with the Holy Ghost the vastness of your wealth there is something on the inside of you the bible says in ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 it declares this very clearly it says the glorious inheritance his glorious inheritance in you the saints the vastness of your wealth his inheritance all of eternity locked up on the inside of you you are a carrier of the world you are a carrier of eternity do you realize that people's destinies are tied up to your answers 
Do you know that God knew you were going to be in this time in history and he has put in you the solution to the question that your generation will ask? Do you realize that? Do you realize that everything that you are looking for, God has already put that in you, waiting for your discovery. And when you discover what's in you, what on the outside of you now begins to respond to what they have discovered, you have discovered on the inside of you. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Welcome on board, pretty. I love you, sweetie. Now, I'm talking about this now. <laughs> are you with me? Once you discover what's on the inside of you and you begin to nourish God's dreams in you, all of a sudden you begin to operate in a totally dif different dimension. The world around you begin to respond to the change you've become and something amazing begins to take place. You become a sign and a wonder. You become a sign and a wonder the world around you would marvel at you and they'll look at you and say my god this lady this man you are what manner of man are you what manner of woman are you they marvel because they've never seen anyone like you hallelujah the world is waiting for for us to show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness out of darkness now when i get excited like this now because i can see the different angles and the different dimensions the holy ghost wants to take us into <laughs> my goodness the wealth of your life there is wealth everywhere the greatest discovery you can have in life is to discover what god has put on the inside of you the second greatest thing you can have is to discover the blueprint of the future Whoever knows what the future holds becomes the one that leads others to the future. If you don't know what the future, if you're busy talking about the past, you will miss the opportunity given to take the lead and impact and change the course and the, the history and the destinies of nations. Every history was made by those that were not satisfied with the status quo. They decided to do something in their day to cause a change, to cause a ripple that keeps reverberating all through the world. Today is your day and today is the beginning of something amazing. Do you understand that? You are bigger than who you think you are. You can say that to yourself, I, I am I'm bigger than who I think I am. I've got something that the world needs. I am loaded with good stuff. What God has put in me is amazing. Say that to yourself and see what happens. All the negative things that sometimes comes to your mind begins to fall off and all the negative things people have told you like they will tell you except I, I do this you will not succeed I tell those people take a number you have no nothing you have no chance to stop my destiny my destiny is locked up in my spirit and only the right people that speak from the perspective of heaven can unlock that in me if you're speaking anything negative it does not affect me because i am not in your frequency you are on the wrong channel and i'm telling you you are off you are off tune and you <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> i'm telling you poor little devil has no idea what <laughs> <laughs> that's why can you imagine for one week we are going to be having fun like this shine that's what we're going to be talking about in the power school you are going to hear things you've never heard before I can assure you of that it's gonna be amazing 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 your eyes are meant to see you are called to do big things hallelujah what am I saying let me segue I'm talking about <laughs> now I told you when I got up the Holy Ghost began to say some things to me awaken to take over awaken to take let me give you a little insight into that in Luke chapter 9 verse 32 but Peter and they that were there were heavy with sleep this was Jesus and the mountain of transfiguration he says, and they were heavy with sleep. Let me explain that a little bit today to, so that you understand what I'm talking about. They were heavy with sleep. That meant sleep was overtaking them. Today, people are spiritually 
asleep. They're heavy with sleep of religion. Religion has made them so tired that they no longer can stay awake and capture the wonders of heaven. So they become so heavy with sleep. Here what the next thing it says. And when they awake, when they awake, the soul has glory. <laughs> oh my goodness, that scripture just came into my spirit while I was getting ready this morning. I was getting up, I was just enjoying my, my morning and drinking some nice coffee and uh, drinking some nice tea and just enjoying myself. And then the Holy Ghost says, awaken to take. Awaken to take. And then he just brought the scriptures to my spirit. He said, they were heavy with sleep. But when they were awakened, the soul, the glory, what you see is what you get. You are changed by what you see. What you see is like a camera that captures into your spirit. And when it captures into your spirit, now your spirit begins to get all the material God has put on the inside of you. And your mind has changed to align with your spirit by the renewing of your mind. It aligns with your spirit. And then your mind becomes a, a, a factory where you begin to put together this raw material from the spirit dimension. This picture and prototype you've gotten from heaven. When you see it, you're capturing the blueprint. It's called hope. Hope is the blueprint. You capture the hope of heaven and you bring that into your spirit. Now you have a blueprint to build from. The Bible says according to the heavenly pattern or according to the pattern that was I showed you on the mountain. That's what God said. He said build it according to the pattern I showed you in heaven. In other words, if you are going to operate in the dimension of God, you've got to have a blueprint of heaven, a blueprint of the future, a blueprint of your destiny. And I'm telling you, you can whistle your way through because you were building like a master builder. I'm telling you, this is the season to discover the vastness of your world, how to produce what's in your spirit. The Bible says the heart of a man is where all the treasure is. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And God has put this treasure in your heart he has put this treasure in earthen vessel in your spirit and your spirit the Bible says the Word of God now it searches the inward part the inward part of the belly because out of the belly flows rivers of life giving water water does not water itself water water ever things around it what when water comes it flows and it waters everything outside beyond itself. You are a carrier of the source of it. Out of your innermost being flows the rivers that brings life wherever it goes. Today, you are a producer of things. Don't say, oh no, I can't produce anything. I'm just going to pray. There is a pattern God is giving you. Are, are you catching on to this? You are awakened to take. Immediately, you wake up. You see the glory. And you begin to see patterns of things. That's how God operates. You begin to see blueprints. It's called hope. You see yourself healed. You see yourself not sick. You see yourself blessing people, paying people school fees, building houses for people, helping pastors that are struggling, helping people that have a passion for missions. And he said, I'm going to write the check to make sure you can get the message of love and of good news to people. You become a builder of other people's dreams because you have seen a picture of the heavenly, heavenly pattern. You have captured, remember, it's like a camera. You've captured, I see Ning is on. Welcome back. I love you. I like seeing you on. And I see, wow, Eric is on. When you capture the picture of hope, that is your blueprint. And when you have the blueprint, my God, my God, my God, something begins to happen on the inside. In your spirit, something begins. I'm talking about how can you produce? How can you re? produce the picture or the the things you've seen in your heart the picture you've seen in the treasure house of your heart hallelujah here the bible says when they awoke and uh, when they awake they saw when you awake you see when you come alive you begin to 
embrace and you begin to extract from everything around you. The reason why a lot of people are struggling is because they do not understand that they, uh, the Bible says a man's belly shall be satisfied with by the fruit of his lips. That means when you speak, people will recognize what you carry and they invest in it because they know that their increase is linked to what you're saying. I'm telling you, there are blueprints being released right now of the future. Can you receive it right now? Can you receive it? We started by talking about the, the, the chaos of miracles just happening. I told the people when I said, take it, receive it, and the same thing right now. God is giving you blueprints. Some of you are going to come up with new ideas that the world has never heard of before. It may be something better than Facebook, something better than, than the, a lot of things that people are, are, are enjoying today. Somewhere, somebody is dreaming the next, the next new thing. Could that somebody be you? Don't tell me I live in this country and I have this limitation. Thank God that in the dimension of the spirit, there is no time or space. In other words, you can flow and operate in a dimension that nobody knows. The Bible declares that Peter and the rest were heavy with sleep. That meant there's something about sleep. When you have sleep, you, your whole body cannot stay awake. You've been trying to read one line over and over and over. You can't even make sense of it. And they were heavy. And that is what religion does to people. They become heavy with all kinds of traditions. And there is no light of revelation. There is nothing happening on the inside. But this is what the Bible declares. It says, but when they are awake, awake they saw his glory. They saw his glory and they could see the dimension of the spirit. They could see another dimension of the spirit and they saw two men that stood with him. They were awake now. They could see. May God give you and open up those blinders you've been in so that you can see and you come alive today. Hallelujah. You come alive today and you can see the dimension of what God is saying. Hallelujah. Now, what, what, is, what is Paul saying? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. It talked about living in the light. In verse 6 it says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. When people start using, that means words that have no power, that do not energize you. For example, if I come to you and say, I am the only one God speaks to, if you don't follow me, this is going to happen. That's vain words. It's just popping people up. Now, but when I tell you God is at work in you, you can hear him and he wants to talk to you more than you want to listen. And all of a sudden, something comes alive on the inside of you. You said, yes, I believe that. Those are words of power. Those are words of power. Don't let people deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. People that don't believe the word of God, all of a sudden they begin to stumble and get into all kinds of mess. It says, be not ye therefore partakers with them. In other words, when people are running here and there trying to find out this, I remember I said to you, um, a lot of people are looking for a word. No, I have the word. I believe the word. I have a show word from God. When somebody tells me, give me a prophetic word, I love that. Guess what? It really happens. But you know what? They only confirm the word I already received. Let me tell you how it works. God does not play partiality. Acts chapter 10 verse 34. He said, I've come to see that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who works righteousness, that one is accepted by him. My God, my God. In all the words, God would come to you if you believe what he says hallelujah hallelujah something on the inside begins to come alive when you believe what god says to you today you hear people say well when you do this when you do that come on you never hear me talk like that you you believe in this ministry you support this ministry not because we have tried to manipulate you 
It's because we tell it to you and you get energized by good news and you said, I believe in what he's saying and I'm going for it and you see the benefit, you see the results of it in your own life because you reproduce what I'm talking about. I believe in what I'm telling you so much that when I tell it to you, you believe it too and it produces everything I'm talking about. I like that. I like to see you having fun like me. My God, my, oh God, my God, I'm going to have some fun today. Hallelujah. I am going to have some good fun today. Poor little uh, devil. There is nothing the devil can do about it. We are going to have ourselves a good fun day. Hallelujah. What am I saying to you? There is something that God wants to do. And are you ready for it? That's the question. Can you handle what God wants to do with you? Today is the day to enjoy this. It says, don't be a partaker of those people that are talking fluffy talk, but have no power in it. In other words, it said, for ye were sometimes darkness. Before you were darkness, there was no light, no revelation. You stumbled everywhere you go. You go. But now, are you light? You are light. <laughs> in the Lord. When you come to Christ, you become light. In all the words, you don't shine for yourself. You shine and others will take their bearing from you. Wherever the source of light is, that's where people are drawn to it. So you are living in the light as light and people can find their way through life because you are there. Hallelujah. No one can walk in, 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 in darkness and become productive. No way. Even the blind want to feel something. Because once you can see, once there's light thrown there and your eyes can behold the light, there is a transformation. You behold the glory of the light and everything responds and shines because of the light. Now the Bible says, you are light. That tells me the world of your life, you shine for others. It is important for you to shine. If you don't shine, others will not draw inspiration. If you don't shine, okay, that's message of power school. Let's move on. Hallelujah. Okay, <laughs> I'm giving you some answer. This is just <laughs> a little touch of how it's going to be. Hallelujah. You, you catch on to it the whole for the rest of the meal on this come to power school I'm gonna skip that hallelujah the Bible says walk as children of light we'll talk about that in power school for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable a proof means I know the answer but I'm gonna prove that the answer is right in other words what God is proving is you believe the answers first and you are the end result of it and he's going to prove it every day with you. You are a proof producer. You produce the proof of the veracity of the integrity of the word of God. Every day you're winning and winning and reigning in life. Hallelujah. When you do that, something, hallelujah, something on the inside of you gets excited. Hallelujah. What am I telling you? Uh, I said a lot of those things you're going to catch on to it in the power school. You understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. The Bible says, proving what's acceptable unto the Lord. And it tells you, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. That means the works of darkness, whatever you do, it does not produce fruit. In other words, it's barren. It doesn't produce life. He says, for, he says but rather reprove them. It tells you, get, just get rid of them. In other words, for it's a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things are reproved and made manifest by light. For whatsoever, you say, whatsoever doth make it manifest is light. Verse 14, wherefore he said, Awake, thou that sleepeth, that sleepest, and arise from the dead. In other words, to say awake means you must be sleeping. If God says awake, you are awake, but you're spiritually sleeping. In other words, if you come alive spiritually, as you're hearing this today, something begins to happen. It says, awake those that sleep and arise from the dead. That means those that have not accepted Jesus. When you accept Jesus, 
his life comes into you and Christ shall give thee light oh my goodness that's when you walk with wisdom see that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise people wherever you go wisdom is dripping out of you you are fool you are focused you are invigorated with life from above hallelujah are you catching on to what I'm talking about I see Dawn, God bless you. I'm glad you joined me today. Wow, wow, wow. Now, I'm just, I'm just giving you some, a little insight. I'm going to stay on this because every day, thank God, we, we, <laughs> we don't have to worry too much. Uh, all we have to worry is about how much time we have every day to come to you and minister love that heals you. I hope this is helping you today. If it's helping you, I want your thumbs up. I want your engagement telling me you get what I am talking about. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> oh my goodness there is something that's happening you cannot help but shine hallelujah there is the glory of God locked up on the inside of you and I'm telling you come to power school of miracles there is a season and a time that that thing is breaking is breaking forth hallelujah are you with me today are you with me today there is something there is something that i want to read here it says <laughs> it says this let's go down i'm going to read one other scripture in romans chapter 13. let me see who is the one calling me hallelujah now let me get down to business let me get down to business you know today we have all kinds of technology even if you put it off they can get to you by Wi-Fi <laughs> well let me get to Romans chapter 13 hallelujah it says and knowing and that knowing the time that now is near to awake out of sleep verse 11 for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe in all the words oh my goodness can I talk to you a little bit now is your salvation nearer that means what God's ideal is when you hear this message you awake to it and you are coming to measure up more to the full stature of what God said from the no you are closer to that now than when you first believed in all the words there is the revelation every revelation will take you closer to where you ought to be it will open up a new dimension in your life and so let me get down to the scripture that we're going to be using the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12 it says this it says in verse 34 here is Jesus <laughs> oh generations of vipers <laughs> I can't take it anymore I can't this is the most enjoyment enjoyable moment you can have here is Jesus announcing to them oh you generation of vipers how can you being evil speak good things you cannot do that you cannot be evil and speak good things in other words people that speak evil are full of evil you cannot have sweet water coming out of a bitter well in other words a preacher that is angry and is cursing and is condemning people whoever is they are only showing you how they feel about themselves okay you got that down now <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Are you are you hearing me? I love Jesus. I mean, can you imagine I can see Jesus say, Oh you generation of vipers and the religious people and then they have the, the sick as sensitive or friendly church say, Oh Jesus, you can't talk like that. No, call it what it is. How and he was talking to the religious bunch. He wasn't talking to the ordinary people. He was addressing those opposing the message. We call them a generation of snakes. They will act as if they are with you. They will act as if they know the truth. But behind your back, they are slithering and trying to undermine what God is doing. We don't put up with that nonsense. We don't have that. He says, how can you, being evil, 
speak good things. Impossible. It's a question. You cannot be evil and speak good things. Why? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So you can tell a person by what they say. If I'm giving you good news all the time, that means I am full of good stuff. Anyone tells you otherwise, they are lying. <laughs> My goodness, are you hearing me? <laughs> you see, what am I saying to you? When somebody, to the pure, all things are pure. When somebody is always suspicious, and this is because they are suspicious of themselves. Because they are negative, that's why negativity comes out of them. But a man or a woman full of good things will always say good things. So I can tell how people, what is in, in, inside of people by listening to them. I've said that for many years. Give me two minutes. Let me have a conversation with you. I can tell you every pain, everything you've gone through. Why? It comes out of your speech. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Out of the abundance of your heart, your spirit, out of the abundance, your spirit has been with you from day one. From when you were conceived, your spirit was there. And guess what? Every experience of your life is recorded in that voice box, in that da data recorder called your spirit. No man knows anything about a man except the spirit of man that's in him. So when I get your vo your 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 decoder, your da data recorder called your human spirit. I can tell you what's in there. How do I read your spirit? I ask one question, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. It is not rocket science. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is easy. When you come around me, you make it easy. I see my daughter, Teresia, my apostle, all the way. <laughs> Dynamics of faith. I love you. <laughs> I have missed you. I thought you were going to call me when you came stateside. But let's talk. Call me after this. Now listen to this. I'm telling you that the Bible says, out of abundance, you cannot, when you hear people condemning others, you hear people that are mad at others and they are suspicious of other preachers, they are attacking other people, is because they are attacking themselves. You cannot give what you don't have. And verse 35, it says, a good man out of the good treasure a good person a good person out of the good treasure of the heart remember we talked about that the last three weeks about God's treasures in you the unsearchable unsearchable riches of Christ and we talked about Christ in you that the wisdom of God in the wisdom are hid all the treasures of wisdom. In Christ are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. We talked about the Word of God being the entry point or the discovery point where you can make your recovery. And I said that the spirit, the human spirit, is the place of discovery because the Holy Ghost comes into your spirit and become one with your spirit. You have a new spirit within you. Anyone joined with the Lord is one spirit. You have a new spirit within you, and in that spirit is the gift of the Father, wrapped up the treasure of God, the inheritance of God, wrapped up in that spirit. And out of the abundance, once you discover it, using the light of the word, the purpose of the gospel is to shine a light on the treasure God has brought your way. When you read the word of God, it's a set light discovering, going into the inward part of the belly to discover what is in your innermost being. I want you to make the discovery. Now your spirit begins to speak into your mind. Your mind begins to be renewed or changed to be conformed to the image you've seen, the blueprint of heaven, the heavenly pattern, how things are done, how to bring cure to sicknesses and diseases, how to bring new invention you having this idea and guess what happened you begin to translate it and what happens out of your speech out of the good treasure of good treasure not bad treasure good treasure treasure you have treasures in your heart or your spirit you will bring forth that is what I'm trying to get to you you will bring forth hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah you will bring forth you will bring forth 
you will bring forth. Hallelujah. Ning, that's your inheritance. Yes, that is your inheritance. You know, those of you that are connected, every time you're sowing, you're making, you see, the Bible says, fruit abounds to your account. When you sow, you are increasing the fruit. The Bible says, you're increasing the fruit of your righteousness or the fruit of your believing. Your seeds increase your fruit. That means a farmer that plants a seed, the more seeds you plant, the more acreage and ability to increase the fruit you're receiving. Hallelujah. Are you catching on to that? It says, out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things. Good things. How do you bring it? Hear this. Hear this. Verse 36, but I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account, therefore, on the day of judgment. In other words, the trigger mechanism is what you say. How do you produce pictures? I'm going to give you some things to think about the next couple of days. How do you produce what's in you? Number one, you cannot produce what is not in you in your spirit write that down and you that what's not in your spirit and you if you cannot capture something in your spirit you cannot reproduce it you cannot reproduce what you have not captured in your spirit everyone that has produced anything produce what pictures they have in the spirit i'll be teaching you how to get that later on remember what i said the one that finds a blueprint of the future leads the pack that's how it works you cannot produce anything that you have not captured in your spirit remember what you capture in the spirit is the blueprint it's called hope faith is the substance of your hope faith is the substance it is the substance of your hope your hope is the blueprint your faith is the material that puts down the blueprint and makes it work i have a whole th teaching on that i hope you understand it. how to produce what's on the inside of you hallelujah <laughs> i see kim oh my goodness <laughs> that's my cousin kim welcome on board i love you sweetie and i see you guys are doing very well the children are doing very well my goodness you gotta come visit us hallelujah my goodness there is something on the inside of you so vital so alive that when you believe the word of god it triggers things in you and you begin to say i have my hands i have my eyes i have my brain i can walk i can speak i can i can do some i can love somebody and you begin to produce exactly what you see in the spirit hallelujah you begin to see things you cannot produce what's not in your heart everything every every tower builder is a tower thinker everyone that has built a mega bridge is a mega bridge thinker you cannot produce what you don't say i'm going to stay on that today and i'm telling you tomorrow it's going to be moving to another dimension the vastness of your wealth how to produce what's on the inside of you we're going to be taking up awaken to take we're going to move that to another dimension tomorrow and i can i can assure you you are going to be running with champions this week we are coming today is uh, is transformation tuesday getting ready for something amazing this week and i tell you i've said to you many times i thank god for all of you making daily investment in this ministry why is that important because the bible says Fruit is abounding to your account. It's not that we seek it, but that fruit may abound to your account. That means the more you're invested in this ministry, whatever we say comes directly into your spiritual account and it would reproduce in you exactly what you're hearing. That's why it's very important people are never offended at what you want to drink from. Because once you're taken offense about what you're interested in drinking from, you can no longer swallow what they say it's very important we we'll stay away from all this small thinking let's think big things about god so today i want to encourage you hallelujah to think on the dimension of god in your giving uh, some of some of us have patterns of how we give we give consistently like this that's good but begin to think as a tower giver and begin to expect tower increase begin to think beyond how you're used to doing things and expect 
got to do something incredible and i pray that the video today we showed you uh tomorrow i'm just gonna we're gonna do something crazy we're gonna show some crazy video of crazy miracles and you see the power of god hitting the people what happens when the glory comes to you what happens when the glory comes to you sometimes our problem is what not to show but i hope that you have enjoyed this today hallelujah everything you do is actually opening a new dimension for you i see alexander i see mark i see uh, apostle helen i see pastor Willie johnson i can't wait to see you i love when you're there at the power school i love your consistency i love it when you guys come over and uh, when i see you pastor Willie, i smile i see ning i smile i see all of you that are consistently there chris everybody hallelujah pastor lizzie i see all of you and I know it is going to be a love fest. Just come, just come get yourself ready. And uh, thank you for sowing today. Every day you sow, uh, remember a seed a day. We'll keep poverty away. Let me give you another dimension. A seed a day reproduces heaven in your world every day. Hallelujah. A seed a day will reproduce the substance of what you've heard in your world hallelujah so when you sow a seed and said i believe what you're saying i release a seed it begins to produce in you exactly what you have heard hallelujah i believe that god is doing a new thing every day i see something amazing is happening hello ramsey i see you i see princess lucy i see shirjit come on guys i'm loving this i'm loving this nelita i love you guys my goodness Chris, wait, everybody is on, hallelujah. So what we're going to do, remember, you are a builder of mega skyscraper in the spirit. You've got to be a mega thinker. You cannot think small. You've got to think on the level of God. You think about how can we win the world around us. You want to increase in your finances, in everything. Let's think big. we we'll serve our big God. Hallelujah. I love all of you. Thank you all for your consistency. <laughs> Hallelujah. A city day will keep poverty away, but not only that, a city day will bring heaven to you today. Hallelujah. A seed a day would also reproduce what you're hearing today. Hallelujah. Key, key things, three things I just mentioned there. You know, you can go and teach that message, it's free. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am excited. Eric, I'm going to still send that thing to you. We had to move it from the uh, CD to uh, a digital format where we could uh, send it to you. So we had to do that yesterday. I hope you understand that. Hallelujah. You are a mega thinker and you're winning every day. Uh, come on, somebody write, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. Thank God you're not whining. You are winning. Hallelujah. I love all of you. <laughs> You guys make me so happy. You know what I love about this? Because I know when you're writing, there's fire on the inside of you. You all are shining. You all are glowing. You all are winning. Let me tell you, today is something new happening to you. Whether it's night, whether you're in New Zealand, Australia, you are winning every single day. Get yourself into the place of a greater expectation of results i want to say i love you i love you i love you and thank you for your sowing your seed go to christlove.org sow a seed today say i believe in what you're saying i want to connect with what you're saying i want to become a financier and a sponsor of this program hallelujah it just makes it easy for us to come to you without any encumbrances we can just come and bless you and make sure you are fed every single day hallelujah Thank you all for joining me today. Tomorrow, we are going to take it. You are, you are awakened to take over. Get ready. We are going to go into the dimension tomorrow. Amen. I'll be talking to you tomorrow about producing what God has put in your spirit. God bless you. And thank you for your seed. I release the blessing upon you now in the name of Jesus for the seed sown. Thank you all for your investment in this ministry. We know it's because of you that the message of the gospel goes to the world. Thank you for your partnership every single day. And I love you. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. God bless you. See you tomorrow.